Hi, my name is Phil and I'm a senior lecturer in astrophysics at the University of Lincoln and I want to kind of go back to galaxies but this time around looking at dwarf galaxies. Now there's lots of different types of dwarf galaxies and I'm going to focus on the common types in this one and I'll do a separate video for ones that or for the rarer ones basically. So before we do that, let's just recap what most common types of galaxy are in general to the main types actually. So if we go to the Hubble classification system, you get this kind of tuning fork and you have spirals on the right here and you have ellipticals on the left. And it's a tuning fork because actually the top branch there is for normal spirals and then the bottom branch is actually for barred spirals. And actually on some diagrams that you see, there's actually one in the middle, which is for intermediate. So these are ones that have a weak bar. But generally, evolution-wise, they will move from the right-hand side to the left-hand side. So the spiral arms themselves actually get more tightly wound. A few other things happen as well. They reduce their gas content, things like that. They get redder, for example. But anyway, spirals sit there. They're disc-like, they have spiral arms, that's kind of why they're called spirals, essentially. Um, so here's an example of one. They typically have gas, so spiral galaxies have gas, which means that they have star formation occurring. And um, because they have star formation occurring, they will have a population of younger blue stars in comparison to older galaxies. And they've got disc-like dynamics, so they're kind of flat like a disc. They're not exactly flat, but they're not spherical and they rotate round in a disc, so they have like a net rotation to them. So key things then for spiral galaxies. And then you have your ellipticals, they sit kind of on the left hand side, and these are mostly defined by their shape. So we give them a classification purely on their shape, and it could be just line of sight how we're seeing them, or it could be a physical difference in their shape which gives them their more elliptical or more spherical shape. So they go from like E0 to E7, basically, and it's mostly down to their shape. And the main differences between ellipticals and spirals is that they don't have any star formation occurring, current star formation at least. The motions of the stars are more random, so they don't have a net rotation to them. The stars are more random, a bit like particles in a gas, it's a bit more randomised. They don't have any gas, which is why they don't really have any star formation. And their, the overall population of stars is older, redder stars, basically, because they're older objects. And they obviously don't have the spiral arms, which is a fairly obvious thing. Is they, kind of, they have a smooth kind of surface profile. They don't have those spiral arms, any of the features. They're quite smooth in appearance. Now, dwarf galaxies are basically just smaller galaxies. And there are, I mean, as an example here, we've got the Milky Way, which is a barred spiral galaxy, and its diameter is about 100 kilo light years, so 100,000 light years across. Dwarf galaxies, as an example, can be 3 to 10 kilo light years, so 3 to 10,000 light years across. There's quite a broad range, actually, on what they can be. They can be very small, and they can be a little bit larger, but... That's the sort of range you're looking at. So around like one tenth to less the size of kind of the Milky Way. So fairly small galaxies then. And if we're talking about masses, the Milky Way has a mass of approximately two trillion times that of the sun. Whereas dwarf galaxies, it's going to be on the order of billions of solar masses instead. So big differences kind of in their overall mass and their actual overall size. I mean, it should be obvious in their name, they're dwarf galaxies, they're gonna be smaller than your normal galaxies. Now, elliptical galaxies obviously have much larger ranges of sizes and masses, and these can have actually sizes up to millions of light years, and tens of trillions of masses of the sun. And the reason for that is if you look at the actual evolution of spirals and ellipticals, a lot of elliptical galaxies essentially are growing from the merger of other galaxies. That's why they have less net, or so they don't have any net rotation. Their gas is essentially um, quenched as they actually merge. So they, they cause star formation. If you have a look at irregular galaxies, you'll kind of see that. So anyway, elliptical galaxies generally kind of can be bigger, but they do cover a larger range. So these can be quite large. 
So, dwarf galaxies then. These are actually some of the most common types of galaxy in the universe. There's more of these than any other sort of galaxy that there are. That's probably due to their actual size. If you think about stars as well, the most common types of star are actually the smaller dwarf stars, like your red dwarf stars. And it's the same with galaxies, actually. The dwarf galaxies are the most common type. And when we have a look at some examples, a lot of these bigger galaxies like the Milky Way, they actually have satellite galaxies and they have multiple ones. It's a bit like a planet having moons. You're most likely going to end up with more moons in a system than you are a planet. So we end up with more dwarf galaxies than we do main galaxies or the, the larger ones, basically. So where do we typically find them? Well, we can find them in places like galaxy clusters, things like that, but also we see them orbiting other large galaxies. So the Milky Way, the Andromeda Galaxy, which are fairly close to us and we can see really well, we can actually see that those large spiral galaxies actually have satellite galaxies orbiting them, which are dwarf galaxies. So it's very common to see these actually gravitationally bound or orbiting these larger galaxies. I mean, actually, in the end, they will get tidally distorted and probably end up merging with the larger one, but they do at least initially start as kind of these satellite galaxies. And here's an example. So the Andromeda Galaxy is our largest significant spiral galaxy to us, and it's you know a spiral galaxy fairly similar to the Milky Way, but it has a couple of well, that we can easily see with our own telescope. You can see these with your own telescope, basically, if you've got really good seeing conditions, is you've got two other dwarf galaxies nearby, M32, M110, and these are satellite galaxies of the Andromeda Galaxy. And they may end up merging with the Andromeda Galaxy or not in the future, but we do know that Andromeda Galaxy is actually going to emerge with the Milky Way at least. So we do know that these dwarf galaxies are found in and around the outside of the larger galaxies. So the common types of dwarf galaxy are elliptical, spheroid, spiral, irregular. Now actually most of those sound exactly like normal larger galaxies. Elliptical galaxies we just mentioned, spiral galaxies we just mentioned, and I briefly mentioned irregular as well. And to us, the spherical ones are probably just a variant of the elliptical ones. They're just more spherical as opposed to more elliptical. So these are sounding quite similar to the larger ones, at least initially. So dwarf elliptical, you've got an example there in the background. They're smooth. They don't have the spiral arms, again, like the spiral galaxies. They are characterized by having quite low surface brightness, and actually that's ca quite characteristic for most dwarf galaxies. They're small, they, they have less stars in them, they're going to have lower overall surface brightness, so they're going to be harder to actually find, to be honest. And they'll also have a compact central bright region, like a, a central bright bulge, which you can see here. So you're going to find that the, bright, the brightest region of these dwarf elliptical galaxies is going to be the centre, which is also true for the larger elliptical galaxies as well. Again, they're smooth as well. So, fairly obvious, dwarf ellipticals are smaller than your normal ellipticals, and they're mostly comprised of stars, no gas or dust, and they've kind of got random motions of stars, quite similar to the larger elliptical galaxies. Now, there are a few, obviously, variations within this as well, but it could be that these are dwarf ellipticals, they could have initially been dwarf spiral galaxies that were tidally distorted by a much larger galaxy that it had an interaction with, or it could have been a spherical one that was distorted as well. So there's a lot of things going off, at least evolutionary wise, which means that there could be some crossover between all of these. But anyway, quite similar to your larger ones, at least. And they could be the the starting point for a large elliptical that then they will grow in time to these bigger ones due to mergers. So the, the spherical ones then, these are obviously more spherical than a dwarf elliptical, and you've got an example there. Kind of same sort of thing really. They're smooth in appearance. I know you're thinking, looking at the picture, that's not smooth. When we say smooth, we mean there's a lack of features like spiral arms, that sort of stuff. And they have a compact 
central bright region, although this one's not particularly obvious, they'll be brighter in the centre than they are towards the outer part. Same again with your larger ellipticals. Um, again, pretty much as the elliptical ones, mostly stars, little gas and dust, random motions of stars. They don't have a net rotation or disk-like dynamics that the spiral galaxies do. So again, fairly similar to your more spherical elliptical galaxies, essentially. And then onto your dwarf spirals. So these are going to be smaller versions of spiral galaxies, pretty much just a smaller version. Again, they're characterized by having quite low surface brightness, and they typically have quite small diameters. So you're looking like five kiloparsecs um, and below, really, would then classify that as a dwarf spiral galaxy. And in well, I mean, not in comparison, but just like their larger versions of them, they do have gas, they do have dust, they have disk-like rotations. Now, if they've got gas and dust in there, they're likely obviously going to be experiencing star formation, although due to their smaller size, their evolutionary phase, it's a little bit, there's a bit more going off there, but we'll leave it for that. But typically composition-wise and things like that, they are fairly similar to the larger spiral galaxies. And then you've got your dwarf irregular galaxies. Again, these look like smaller versions of the irregular galaxies. And irregular galaxies are normally caused by interactions between other galaxies. So they will gravitationally distort one another. So let's say we had a spiral galaxy. If you've got two spiral galaxies kind of merging or gravitationally interacting they would distort and twist their shape and it becomes irregular it doesn't have a symmetric shape no longer so we end up with an, an irregular galaxy and dwarf galaxies are no different really they're just a smaller version of an actual larger irregular galaxy so again this is kind of where they're slightly different maybe from the irregular galaxies as they do have significant gas content, although actually that's kind of true for irregular galaxies, they have significant gas content, or some of them do, and then they can have significant star formation. But these will then have um, rotations as well. Whereas if you've got a larger uh, irregular galaxy, depending on the level of distortion going off, then that rotation is going to be disrupted. So these dwarf irregular galaxies do have rotations to them, Again, quite reminiscent of the larger spiral galaxies. And typically, as I mentioned before, these are these dwarf irregular, along with the normal irregular ones, are likely going to be formed due to tidal distortion with larger galaxies, but also dwarf ellipticals. Let's say you had a spherical galaxy and it was orbiting a larger galaxy as it kind of got close or the tides from that larger one would actually stretch it out to be more elliptical so dwarf elliptical dwarf irregular they quite possibly have been tidally distorted by larger galaxies that they may be nearby or in the process of merging or even orbiting and they could actually be extreme late stage spirals. So these could be like very, very young spiral galaxies that haven't quite reached the size of a normal spiral. They're still kind of growing. So this is another kind of route as well. And they could be like the precursors for the larger spirals because they have the net rotation, things like that. They haven't quite fully formed. They haven't got their form set in yet. So these could just be late stage spirals or extreme, I should say. And they would likely sit on that part of the actual Hubble classification tuning fork really they just sit right over there because if you remember the spirals are going to evolve right to left so if these are extreme young ones or late stage spirals they're going to then sit on that side and move across as they kind of grow and mature essentially and there are some <clears throat> uncommon types which I can kind of cover in separate videos i'm not going to mention these at all but you've got ultra compact ones ultra faint and blue compact dwarf galaxies and i'll do separate videos on those but those are kind of uncommon and the ones i've mentioned in this video are the common types that you're likely going to come across 
So thank you for watching. If you find the videos helpful or you enjoy the videos, then do consider becoming a member. There's extra benefits in the member section, put extra videos there, and it just generally helps support the channel as well. So thank you.